Hello, artist friends, and welcome to Art with Miss Walker. I'm an elementary art teacher with the Jackson Public School District, and I teach at Casey Elementary. We are part of the Mississippi Arts Commission Whole Schools Initiative, which means we use the arts to help us teach and to help us learn. I'm so glad you joined me today, and let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is to gather our art materials. So hopefully you can put all of your art materials and tools in a box or in a sack or a special place in your house, just somewhere where you can easily get to them whenever you want to create. In my box I have markers, crayons, scissors, glue, different types of glue, and paper. Today, we're going to use our scissors, and we're going to use our glue, and maybe even some of our markers or crayons, but I'm just going to leave them in my box. Okay, so I'm going to move that to the side, and we're also going to need some paper. So you could have just regular copy paper, you could have construction paper, you may even have something that has writing on the front and you can use the back. So you just use whatever kind of paper you have. And then we're also going to need different things to cut from. So I have my little box where anytime I find something in a magazine or from junk mail, I just tear it out and put it in here. So it can be like I said, from a magazine or a newspaper. Maybe it's leftover paper from another project. So any kind of, anything that you can find around your house to cut from. Now, while you're getting your materials and tools together, I want to tell you about this thing. This is called a portfolio. Can you say portfolio? So a portfolio is a place where artists keep their work. And I just made my art portfolio. I took a piece of paper, I folded it, and then I just cut out letters from a magazine to spell my portfolio. So you could work on this too. That way you can have a spot for all of your artwork. I'm just going to move that to the side. All right, so hopefully you have your art tools and materials, and let's get started. The first thing I want you to know is that you are an artist. You are an artist. Let me hear you say, I'm an artist. You can say it better than that. Good job. You definitely are an artist. You are not a cookie cutter. Do you know what a cookie cutter does? Yeah, so a cookie cutter makes the same cookie over and over. And so we don't want to do that. We want to use our imagination to create. So even if you have to use your imagination to find art tools around your house, you can do that because you are an artist. Good. Now as artists, there's more to art than just making and creating. We go through a process. This is our creative process that we go through as artists. This word is investigate. Can you say investigate? Good job. Investigate means we're going to look. Imagine. Imagine. That's when we're going to use the creative part of our brain. Then create. That's when we actually make things. Reflect. Can you say reflect? Now, when we reflect on our art, it might be while we're in the middle of creating. We might say, you know what, I need to fill up this empty space over here, or mm, this isn't really turning out the way I want to, so let me imagine how I can create something different. So that's when we reflect. 
We can also reflect on our work when we finish our work and think about where we want to display our work. So maybe you could hang it up on your refrigerator at home or a wall. You can always put it in your portfolio. You can even share it with others. And at the end of today's lesson, I'll tell you how you can share it with me. So we'll go through this process. Now, our building blocks for art are called our elements of art. And they are line, shape, color, form, space, value, and texture. These are our building blocks of art, so it's what we use to create different things, and we all use these in different ways. So we'll be talking about these throughout the lesson. Now, with today's lesson, let's get ready to, what was this word? Investigate. Very good. We are going to investigate a certain type of art today. What do you see? Can you tell what that word says? Narrative art. When you hear the word narrative, what comes to your mind? Yeah, a narrator. What does a narrator do? They tell a story. And most of the time when we think of stories, we think of books, yep, or somebody telling us a story. But art can tell stories too. Now before we look at some art, I want us to think about our senses, okay? Let's think about our five senses. Our sense of sight, hearing, tasting, touching, and smelling. Okay, so I really want us to think about our senses when we investigate these works of art. Okay, let's look at this work. What do you see? Do you see people? Do you see instruments? So what do you hear? Yeah, I hear the music too. What about, what do you feel? Look at how they're dressed. They have on long sleeves and pants. I can tell that the tree is missing the leaves, so it's probably what time of year? Yeah, probably fall or winter. And I see that the name of this is Circus Sideshow. So if I think about a circus or if I think about our state fair, what would you smell if you were there? Can you smell the popcorn? Can you smell the cotton candy? So this is a work of art that's telling us a story about a specific moment in time at a circus. What about these two works of art? Are they telling us similar stories? Notice how the artists use our building blocks, our elements of art, in different ways. If you were in this painting, what would you feel? Can you feel the waves rocking? Can you feel the water splashing? What would you see and hear? Good. Now looking at these, which one would you rather be in? I would rather be in the one with the light blue colors and the peaceful lines. That's the one I would rather be in. Now, is this telling something that could really happen? Could either of these things really happen? Yes, they could. They could really happen. And so something that's true would be nonfiction. Good. What about this? Now, can this really happen? Can you really ride a fish? No. So that would be what? Fiction. Good. What about, what would you feel in this one? Can you feel the oars and paddling and the waves? Can you feel the scales of the fish? What about, what kind of sounds would you hear? I wonder why they are paddling on a fish. Hmm. What about this work? 
Do you see the instruments? Do you hear the same type of music that we heard before? I like how the artists use the colors and the lines in the background too to really fill up that space. Here's another one. What do you smell? Can you smell the sweet, the sweet, sweet smell of the flowers? Do you see the two ladies and the little girl? I wonder what she's telling her. I like how the artist filled up the space from the bottom to the top and the side to the side. So this process of art where we combine things with glue is called collage. So that's when we take different things and combine them together with glue. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you a um, collage from one of my art friends named Jordan. And Jordan made her collage on the computer. Can you tell what she's holding? Okay, good. So now let's get ready to use our imagination and create. All right, so I'm going to take my paper. And we're making a collage. So I'm just going to get my little box. Hopefully you have found something to cut from. And maybe you can start saving, saving your cutouts. That's what I've done. I just save stuff and I put it in here. And when I find something that's interesting, I just take my scissors and I cut. And maybe I don't even have like a plan yet of what I want to make. But I can just take my images. Now, for the sake of time, I've already cut, I've already found some images and I've cut them out. Okay, so now I'm going to take these images and I'm going to think about how I want them to look. So I can take them and arrange them on my paper. And this is when I would stop and reflect and I can change things around. That's what's great about art. There's no right or wrong. It's just using your imagination until you get it how you like it. So, so far, this is looking pretty realistic, right? have a house and some trees. Now, this is a trick that we do as artists to show the element of space. We don't put everything straight in a row, okay? We want to have them in different levels to really give that element to show space. All right, now I'm gonna take, what is this? A shoe. I'm going to take my shoe and my person. And you can't really sit inside of a shoe, can you? No, but that's the great thing about art. You can do all kind of things. So my person is sitting in the shoe. And where are they? Outside. So now I'm just going to take, once I have it the way I think I want it to look, I'm just going to slide it to the side and then I'm going to work from the back to the front. So I'm going to take my glue, I'm going to twist it open, okay, and I'm going to use, you can use tape or a glue stick, but I'm going to put a little dot of glue and then just kind of make some squiggles. I don't have to use a big old glob of glue and see if I can put the whole bottle of glue on here. It doesn't really take that much. Okay, and then I'm gluing it to my paper. Okay. Again, I flip it over. I'm putting my glue around the edges. It doesn't take a whole lot. And then I'm just kind of building it up. Okay. 
And remember, you want to show that element of space. So you don't want everything in a straight row. And you really want to fill up your paper from the top to the bottom. All right, and here are my trees. Maybe one's down here. And it may not look exactly like I had planned out in the first part, but that's okay because you are an artist. You can change your mind. I think I'm gonna like that one behind, like that. Okay, so I would just keep building and adding. Again, just a little bit of glue, not big old globs of glue. Okay. And then might even pull this up so he looks like he's sitting in the shoe. Isn't that silly? Sitting in a big old shoe. All right, so there is my collage. And I'll have to wait for a little bit for it to dry. Okay, so I'm just going to put that to the side. And I had another one that I wanted to show you. And I went ahead, just for the sake of time, and cut some things out. Okay. So you get to decide which way your paper goes, horizontal or vertical. And on this one, I just started cutting out this colored paper and these wavy lines. That's how I started. So let's go ahead and glue this down. And when I started, when I start thinking about art, I may not always know what it's going to turn out, what the final piece is going to look like. I'm still just filling up that space. Always remember from top to bottom and side to side. Top to bottom and side to side. Okay, so I'm just kind of filling up the space. And look, this one's broken, but don't throw it away. I'm just gonna put it in my little collage box and maybe I could use it for another project. As artists, we like to keep things and use all different kinds of things to make art with. All right, I think I need one more at the top. So I'm gonna add one more. All right, and then this is a flower. And so this flower was made with some leftover construction paper. And it was just kind of pieced together and glued together. So I can put just a little bit of glue on it. And then I just kind of look around to see where I think it would work. Now this reminds me, look how it comes off of the paper. I just love that. You don't always have to stay on the paper. It can come off of the paper. And then I took this and I made, it's all stuck together. I took this and can you tell what that is? It's a B with what? with human eyes and a human mouth. That's kind of silly, isn't it? That's a great thing about art. So then I can think about where I want to put my bee. And this process of combining things with glue is called what? Collage. Very good, collage. So let me put this one to the side and let it dry. And I have some more that I want to show you, some examples. I'm going to go to my portfolio. And here's one. Is this telling a story? Now 
Notice how she has different eyes, a different ear, a different mouth. Look, she even has three hands. So it doesn't always have to make sense. And what do you think she's into? Do you know what that is? A camera, and I see a crown, and lots of jewelry, so maybe she's into fashion. Here's another one, and this one is just made with construction paper. Can you tell what's going on in this one? Can you tell that it's a girl? And what do you think this is? Yeah, so maybe she's playing in the rain. Look, do you see eyes, nose, and mouth? No, so, but you could tell that it was a person just by the shape. All right, I have another one I want to show you. This one was by my artist friend, Wyatt. Look at his collage. And his collage is called the Turkey Run. Notice how his comes all the way off of the paper and he really filled up the space and he even added some more details with markers. Good job, Wyatt. And I have one more from my artist friend, Lily. And this is called The Dog Run. The Dog Run. I loved how she combined the big dog. Looks like it's chasing the what? The car and the water. Can that really happen? No, but you can use your imagination. So very good. So I want you to keep on making art. Keep on making your collage. When you get finished, see if a grown-up can help share it with us. You can take a picture with your phone and they can go to facebook.com, like and follow MPB Education, and you can post your photo with the hashtag MPB Art Smart, MPB Artist Friends, and MPB Classroom TV. We would love to see your work. I wanted to thank today the Smithsonian, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the National Gallery of Art, and Core Knowledge Foundations for providing open source images for us to look at today. But most importantly, I wanted to thank you. Thank you so much for showing up and being an artist. Thank you for being creative and using your imagination. And please don't ever forget that you are an artist. See you next time.